And let's go ahead and bring on our first team of this evening uh, coming out of uh, Indiana. Once again, it's Team Hannon, Team 71. Uh, very excited to have them on. Of course, uh, nostalgia for me, as always, going back to my old boomer days. So, uh, but joining us uh, from 71, if you just give a big wave, we have uh, Avi, Jay, Xavier, and Dickshan. Dickshan, I'm sorry. And uh, guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce uh, just what you do on the team, and then we'll jump right into your robot. I know I just said your names, but just let us know what you do on the team a little bit. Um, hello, my name's um, Afi. I'm a junior in high school. <clears throat> I'm a programmer. I work on the, I worked on the Woody Flowers and the Chairman essay, and I'm also a driver on the team. Hello, my name is Jay Morales. I'm a junior. Um, it's my third year on the team, and I'm a driver, a programmer. I work on the essays, and I also did some brainstorming for the robot. Hello, uh, my name is David Morris. I'm a build crew team, uh, sorry. I'm a teammate of the build crew, both for the field and the robot itself. And of course, I've helped construct the platforms used and the robot parts themselves. Yep. Uh, my name is Dickshawn Sherma. I'm a first year mentor for Team Hammond, but I'm an alum from FRC 226. Um, and I've been kind of serving the role of a, as a robot mentor for this season. Um, we're really glad, like uh, what Greg was talking about earlier, that there's no back day. Um, <laughs> we've had a lot of interesting challenges that I uh, could speak to. Well, we'll be jumping a, a bit more into that, of course, and, and talking about things. Uh, uh, yeah, give us an update where you are progress-wise. We'll show some uh, media that will be up on screen. And I don't know if there's anything on camera as well we want to show off, too. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Well, welcome, welcome to the fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First updates now, supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US, scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Um, the progress we, we've made, we've, we've um, like we said, we've, we've ran into some interesting challenges this year. Uh, we're at about 13 members. Uh, and it's really been a lot about rapid react, uh, about running through different situations. Uh, at any time, we've had up to half of our team out uh, with this snowstorm this past week. But uh, besides that, there's some new interesting things that we're doing this year um, that are helping the team team go forward. But yeah, uh, if you want to open up the presentation, we can kind of start talking about how we've progressed. This is just a PDF. Yep, yeah, uh, that, show that the PDF picture, on the screen, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so we initially started with kind of an intake, and uh, we're calling it the ball elevator, the ball elevator uh, mashup. You can also call it cure. Um, but uh, if you guys want to talk about some of our design requirements, some of the things that led up to that, um, that was kind of our progress near week two, week three. And then there's some design requirements that we're, we're kind of striving for as well this season. We wanted to have a two ball intake so we can go. Uh... We want to work around the field quicker, and also we want to uh, have the elevator because we want to have a higher, a higher arch when we shoot our balls. It's also help with the defense and getting around the field. But at the same time, we want to have the robot be smaller so it can fit like in and out of the zone and fit under the hanger. And then the ball elevator on the inside, it has a plastic piece to separate the two balls when they both go in so it doesn't jam and only one ball each side of time. Yep. Yeah, and there's, uh, if you go to the second, we, we also came up with this um, vertical indexer concept that should hopefully make it so if we intake two balls at any one time, which we're not quite sure how often that's going to happen. I guess once we get to competition, we'll find out. But if you go back to the presentation, it's the first link uh, under the vertical indexer kind of okay, one second. open that video. So I have a question. I'll just, while he's opening up. Did you guys choose the color of wheels because they were the ideal durometer for uh, what you were trying to do, or is it because it matched your team colors? You guys answer. I'll be right back. Can you repeat the question, please? No, I was just. I was. So I saw you have a ton of a ton of blue wheels there, which happenly perfect match your team colors. Do you, do you choose uh, the color of wheels based on testing, like these were the best, or was it just it was all about style? 
Um, it was mostly, so the team has been around since 1996. We've accrued a lot of parts over time. And I went upstairs uh, to check out robot parts and I found a giant box with blue wheels in it. And that's essentially what we're doing. The front wheels are two and seven eighths. They're Bainbot's wheels. And the uh, inside wheels are two and three eighths. Um, but initially, uh, we were going to try out maybe PVC piping, some other things, but we threw this on and it worked beautifully. And awesome. we have so much, like, so, like, we have another, another box with wheels in it. It's crazy. Um, cool. So that's kind of the decision process. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe they're wear too quickly or there might be some other issues. Um, but um, I think these are 50, 50A. Um, so we'll see. Okay. All right, so so uh, you've got this great uh, intake and conveyor. Um, what what else do you want you want to highlight on your robot? Um, so our our robot it uh, picks up from the other side and it basically uh, picks up the ball from one side and it shoots from the other side. So it's more like it's easier for autonomous programs. Yep, and that was one of our design requirements. We want to try to have at least a three ball auto. Um, so to kind of optimize that, we chose to do what Avi said, um, pick up from one side and shoot from the other. Uh, what's on the screen right now is kind of our, our CAD design. Uh, what's unique about that actually is this is the first time in the team's history that we've, we've done computer-aided design. Uh, previously, it's been a lot of, uh, it's been some of our sponsors. And uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone's aware of Mr. Bill. Uh, and, Mr. Noble as well, have kind of, uh, were really good at drafting, right? So they're essentially drafted on paper. And that, that's a process that they continue with through 2020. Wow. Uh, this is the first year that we've kind of uh, done CAD. Um, that's kind of is another reason why our process is possibly a little further behind than we'd like it. Uh, but through slowing down and having everything in CAD, it's really helped us out a lot. And it's given the students, uh, you know, an exposure to technology that's very relevant to, you know, uh, what, the 21st century economy. What program are you using this year? Um, so we we started training on Onshape, uh, but there was certain issues. We weren't able to uh, necessarily get everything up to speed as fast. So essentially what we've been doing is I've been running an, on Autodesk Inventor during the team meetings and having some of our mechanical students work through it on Autodesk Inventor just because uh, we were having issues with Onshape and the Chromebooks and everything. So we kind of we're, we rapid reacted and uh, <laughs> switch to inventor kind of like we nice. so, Yeah. So students, I got to ask you, we, we see a little bit of a robot frame in picture uh, right now that's in front of you. Do you can we talk a little bit about uh, your progress so far on, on the assembly of that? Yeah, if you go to the page four on the on the thing, there's a better picture. I know the camera is not really capturing too much. Sure, you don't, um, you don't want to team lift it up or what? We could. No, <laughs> just, just, uh, just give me a hard time. So. It's essentially the same. It's, yeah, it's yeah, what's yeah. in the picture, that's the last night. We're about uh, 31 days out to competition, uh, but there's some interesting things that we're approaching, uh, some ideas that we had for the climb, uh, where we wanted to weld our robot and have some other frame components be really robust. So what you see there is mostly the metal that's about ready to be welded and uh, you know, good for competition. Uh, so that's places, interesting. So, so can I ask you, ask, so, so this is a, this is a, looks like a kit chassis, like an Andy yes. Mark kit chassis, but you're gonna, you're gonna take that and weld that. Uh, some, there's some other components within, within the chassis that are custom. Okay. Um, but yeah, the idea was I, I sent you a, a meme climber presentation, um, which is one of the ideas that we worked through with the students. Um, and for that, we want our chassis to be very robust. So that was one of our ideas. Yeah. Um, and students, so we don't mean to make you get a workout and you can set that down. If you yeah. Want. You can put the robot down. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's just like, so whenever the reason I ask about the welding is that whenever yep. I hear something that's. A little bit different because I know that most people who are using a kit chassis do not weld their chassis. I, I'm really curious to kind of explore that a little bit. So, it's, so you're you're saying that with your climber, uh, you think you needed a little bit of extra rigidity um, mm -hmm. that you were worried about. I mean, it's not going to prevent the plates the from plates from bending in, right? But it's going to mm -hmm. add that rigidity to the chassis. Uh, if you want to go back to the presentation, there's there's like multiple sides, and I can kind of explain uh, the meme climber idea. Um, so essentially what we figured out is if we can get that climber hook to really low in the chassis, you can theoretically skip the high, high rung. Um, so, I mean, you're obviously going to have to play around with it a lot. Uh, but that was one of our initial ideas. We've kind of pivoted, pivoted to a less meme design 
uh, that's further on in the presentation. But the idea would be you'd get here, and then you would, uh, if you wanted to just click through the slides, you would pivot something up or extend something, and uh, you know attach on to the traversal rung. And then at this point, you would just swing violently into the, the driver station. Uh, so this was, yeah, this was a meme, meme design. Uh, this could be something that we explore further on the season. We're really open to design iteration. Uh, the design is very built to be modular. Uh, but the, the idea is when you climb up, right, you have to be like the biggest risk with that design besides your robot violently swinging into the driver's station is you could possibly get stuck between the high, uh, the high rung and the mid rung, right? So we're like, oh, this is an issue with the design. And then we're like, oh, this is an issue with the design. <laughs> so what we could do is essentially create a design, like it intentionally get stuck, right? This is our less meme idea. Intentionally get stuck on the high with a similar concept to what we just saw, right? And have a high climb that's a lot faster. Right? And that kind of goes back to some of our design strategy philosophies. You want to talk about Avi? All right. Okay. Well, so, so I'll ask your, um, uh, if you mind if I cut in. So, um, no so we're you guys are competing weeks three and four, right? So you have quite a few yep. weeks still uh, to prepare on that. So students, let me, yeah. So students, let me ask you uh, yep. on there. Uh, you know, where where do you, from a progress standpoint, like as we get it, like in the next couple weeks, where do you want to be, kind of the next couple weeks as you start to get ready for competition season? Hmm. So we have four weeks. In the next couple of weeks, we want to finish the robot within like maybe the next two weeks or maybe the next week. So that way the drivers can start getting more practice in and then finishing the electrical components and start programming the robot and think of the, thinking of different autonomous programs that we want to run. So by competition time, our drivers have enough experience and they're ready to go. So what's kind of priority number one for you right now? So like, you know, you want to get obviously the robot kind of assembled, but is there, um, like if you have to prioritize like, you know, the climber over like the intake or the shooter or anything like that, what's like the number one thing you guys want to get done first? <clears throat> Probably the shooter. I, I think this sure. And you guys are, is the plan still to shoot into the upper hub or has that changed at all in the last few weeks since we've uh, spoken with no, you? No, that's not the same. Very cool. Well, uh, looking, uh, you know, in the next uh, little bit of time, so we have uh, your drive chassis assembled right now, right? Um, and then you talked about, you know, shooters can be uh, kind of run priority. Are there any other changes from like uh, what you've looked at building overall since we last spoke to you? Has has the general uh, goal or like like what's going into the robot has that changed at all since the last few weeks? No, not necessarily. Um, yeah, no, the uh, design or the philosophies and strategies are very similar to what we were thinking in week one of build season. Um, we, we're a little bit further behind than we'd like to be. Um, but what you don't see here is a lot of the parts that we've already manufactured. We're, we're really waiting on some of the COTS components to come in. Um, and once those do come in, we should be able to start moving really quickly. Yeah. So why don't, um, is there something that, um, you know, what's something surprising that you've learned about this game or the robot that you uh, have learned over this time? Because obviously, if your design hasn't changed, you've talked about you've had to rapidly react to quite a few different things. Share, um, maybe we could have the, the kids share something that they've, you know, found that was surprising or an assumption that was different from what they thought. Hmm. Uh, something I found surprising is how much the ball, sorry, the balls bounce when we're shooting. So specifically, okay, so like when you're shooting and going in the hub, you're saying like it's bouncing out, or what are you seeing uh, happen in that? Oh, it, when we shoot into the upper hub, since the it's like moving out of like plastic material and the balls are bouncing, when it's like sometimes it can bounce out. So we're trying to make that higher arch to shoot almost perfectly at a downward. So when it's going down, it goes straight down the middle. So the ball can't bounce out as much. Is is your team playing with uh with the like what's what spin is going to be on the ball? Is it going to be front spin or back spin? Um, and are you playing with that at all for your shot? Yeah, if you go to our um, pad design, this 
one thing we can talk about. So what is one thing we did to reduce backspin? We were we were worried about backspin. So I mean, this is the one thing we can show you within the cat design. Um, so if you zoom in kind of to the shooter, you can see there's a second wheel at the top. So you're talking about the the, the, the smaller blue wheel that's like on the the right side of this image. Yep, that's a two inch. Yep, two inch stealth wheel. Got it. So you're running. So the so the front side of your shooter looks like it's running uh, one to one, four inch wheels. Um, yep. And then the back side of it is running a half side wheel. And then is there a gear ratio between those two? Uh, the gear is just to flip the direction. Got it. So it's still so it's running one to one mm -hmm. on the back wheel too, just the opposite direction. So you're essentially yep. sculpting the shot a little bit just by doing that. Do you think yep. that you're going to be changing or or playing with different gear ratios for that to get any different controls there or is it or have you prototyped that enough to know that this works great um like i said earlier our design is based around a lot around modularity if you look at our shooter there's slots in the uh in in the shooter plate itself that allow us to kind of work around and play with the angle um as far as gear ratios go there isn't anything anything where we could I mean, it's two thirty tooth gear, so you can play around with that center to center and potentially use different gear ratios. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and everything is eighty twenty as well, uh, which is kind of the design philosophy that the team has used for a lot of years. Um, we're kind of sticking with that through this season. Um, so it's 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 a lot of modularity essentially. Cool. And able to change things and play around with them. Well, seventy one, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk to us more about uh, your progress. Obviously, you got a lot of work ahead of you uh, into uh, a week three event, but we know you can do it, and uh, can't wait to see your results. And we'll be watching you week three. Thanks a lot for taking the time, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.